And it's all because of what he did for us. Let's stand and sing about that this morning. 586, down at the cross where my Savior died. Glory to his name. Let's sing about that together this morning. Lift it up together.
to do in the sweet by and by is sing glory to his name. Let's start on the chorus in the sweet by and by. In the sweet. singing. Thank you so much. You may be seated in choir. Thank you for that song. It's one of those ones that builds on you and uh, slow and it's starting and it just comes and then uh, talking about we shall see Jesus. What a joy. Thank you, choir. And uh, thank you for reminding us of that and get us started off on the right foot. And then thank you for singing as well. And uh, while we're thanking uh, folks, thank you for being here. We're excited about what God's going to give us this morning. And I'm certainly glad that we've gathered together. As we go to prayer, I want you to be praying for a few folks. And that is Brother Bobby Brown's aunt, uh, Bobby Brown's family there. Um, Bobby's aunt passed away, and that funeral is this afternoon, so please keep that family in your prayers if you would, and Miss Debbie as well, pray for the whole family there, and uh, then we're also thanking the Lord that uh, Miss Summer Scroggs, we had a time of prayer on Wednesday night, she had surgery on Thursday, she is doing well, she got released, and uh, we're praising the Lord for that, pray for follow-up visits, it all goes well, and we're certainly rejoicing in what news we heard there. And then also, I want you to be praying for Brother Larry Stover. I talked to him just real briefly. He's over at the hospital. I'm not sure at all what's going on, but uh, just something, getting something checked out. So please keep me in prayer for Brother Larry Stover, if you would, please. And we certainly appreciate that. And many others are on our list, but that one was just from this morning. I want to uh, keep you updated on that. Again, welcome. Thank you for being here. If you're watching via live stream, thank you for that. Thank you for joining us at Buffalo Ridge Baptist Church right here in Gray. But uh, we're just excited gathered together, and, and I want you to pray with me, if you would, that God would meet with us in a special way. Lord, we are grateful for the chance to gather. I pray that you would be lifted up. And Lord, as we preach about that, I pray that uh, we would do a good job as a church of just lifting up the Lord Jesus Christ, your precious Son. I pray, dear Jesus, that you would be glorified, magnified, all that's done today. We pray, and we'll certainly thank you for it. And uh, Lord, we love you and ask you to bless in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we're excited about this morning. I wanted to give you this word of announcement. I hear a little one back there, and uh, that's quite all right. I'm glad that little ones are in here. If I can't out preach a little baby, then something's wrong with me as a preacher, so don't you all ever worry about that. And, uh, but I want to tell you about another little one. Michael and Sarah Cannon had their uh, little girl, Lainey Oakland, was born Thursday, and we're certainly grateful for uh, God blessing that family, and I hope you will congratulate them, and uh, they're very, very excited, and you'll be praying for them as well, and uh, so I want to make that announcement. Let me give you just a couple of things to keep up to date on. Back in the lobby on the table, there's a display that says, uh, has a display for veterans, and there's little cards like this. If you're a veteran, you've served our armed forces, we thank God for you. If you wouldn't care to get that, fill it out, and then you can drop it in an offering plate or give it to an usher or give it to one of us uh, or staff, it doesn't matter. But uh, we'd like to compile a list for Veterans Day coming up on November the 10th, and so we'd certainly appreciate your input on that. Also, back in the, uh, in the 
the lobby. There are still our faith promise cards, and you saw that amount in the bulletin. I'm so amazed at what the Lord's doing through our missions program. But you may be thinking, I'd like to get involved with that. Then uh, this faith promise card is there. It's self-explanatory, but you can just fill that out and uh, give, fold it up and give it to an usher, give it to one of the staff or anybody. We'll get it to the right place. But uh, we're grateful for what the Lord is doing through our missions program. Those are a couple of announcements, but we also wanted to say that uh, after the service tonight, if you're a Sunday school teacher, an adult Sunday school teacher uh, of an adult Sunday school class, that is, then I'd like to meet with you briefly just down in the blue room, the Berean classroom. It won't be a long meeting, but I just want to thank you for uh, your service for the Lord. And I want to, as we go forward, give us some input that we can do a, even a greater job of reaching people. So those teachers of adult classes will meet right after the evening service. And one last announcement, there's no more of those little Pinewood Derby cars uh, left, the little cars, but you can get them at Hobby Lobby. So not today, they're closed, but you can get them at Hobby Lobby tomorrow. And uh, we're going to have a, a Pinewood Derby race. Brother Kyle is working on some good things. That's November the 3rd, right after the evening service. I got my car. I, ain't got, I, am, I haven't got it whittled out yet, but I'm going to work on it. So uh, come and we'll have a good time. That'll be right in the, uh, in the Family Life Center after the service. And uh, we'll have a good time with that. I told you that was the last announcement, but I can't miss this one. Men, if you would be able to put in your schedule to come on November the 2nd at 9 a.m. over in the Family Life Center, Brother Archie Johnson is heading up our Steadfast Men's Prayer Breakfast, and we'll go from about 9, or we're at 9, and we'll go to about right 10, so you can get on about your day. We'll have a good breakfast, have a delicious breakfast, and uh, then I'm going to give a short challenge. Just want to be together with the men of our church, and uh, then we'll be off and on about your day. So if you can come from 9 to 10, we'd certainly appreciate it. If you're able to, in the next week or so, sign up at the uh, lobby, there's a sign-up sheet just so we'll know how much food to prepare, and we certainly would appreciate that. So that's enough of those announcements. I'm going to ask Brother Daniel to come back one more time. If you're able to, would you stand together, because the choir is going to join us during this song. It's just like his great love. Hymn number 630. Let's sing about this. A friend, that friend I have, called Jesus. A friend.
Richard Ball has been here a while. He's just a young guy, though, but we are talking as uh, Brother Carrier came in earlier. He was talking about here at the church. Uh, he remembered well when Brother Carrier surrendered and went to the mission field, and uh, it's just wonderful the way that the Lord continues to work at Buffalo Ridge Baptist Church. I'm grateful for all that he's done, and uh, along with that, I am grateful for the Ball family. They're a wonderful blessing to me, and uh, they've got uh, their family and then uh, their grandkids. And, it, and since I am a grandpa, then Brother Richard's the same way. He'll be glad to talk to you for an hour and a half after church and show you pictures on his phone of his grandchildren. But uh, they're a great blessing. Brother Ball, would you pray for our offering, please? Most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this day that you've given us, Lord. What a great privilege it is to come to your house. And Father, I pray that we all have just come receptive to your word and what you have for us. And I pray that you just give our pastor and uh, the words to say, Father, that uh, we, we truly need to, to hear from heaven, and I pray you just speak through him to us. And Lord, we would take that, and we would apply it to our lives daily and weekly and monthly, Father, so that we'd be found just not faithful in your service, but, Father, we'd be pleasing to you in all, uh, all that we do and all we say. Father, we thank you for your love that we just sang about. We just thank you for the, the love that, that is beyond our uh, our comprehension and understanding but you loved us father so much you sent your son to die for us and lord we do thank you for that again this morning father we pray you bless this offering uh, bless both the, the the gift and the giver take it and just use it uh, to continue uh, the work that you would have us to do uh, while you tarry lord we just thank you for all that you do it's in jesus name we pray amen amen you may be seated Song 294, Just As I Am. As we sing this song, the group that's going to sing next is going to make their way up into the choir loft. But I want you to sing this song as a prayer to the Lord. Before you hear the preaching today, as pastor is going to preach in just a minute and challenge each one of us, we ought to come ready to reply before we ever hear what it is. Just As I Am, Song 294. Just as I am.
Struggling through my life and the choices I have made. Looking to the right and left, trying to find my way. Coming to a crossroads where I caught a glimpse of Him. The Savior reaching out to me with hands that bore my sin. No greater love was shown than on a cross of Calvary. I decided then and there, the choice was clear to me. be our anthem for today. I'll take Jesus every time. You say, Pastor, I'm already saved. I already have Jesus, as do I, but I'd like to sign up again today. I'll take him again, and I can't, I'm so thankful. Thank you, Peyton, for leading out on that, and thank you, everybody in the ensemble, for being a part of that. What a wonderful blessing this morning. Just tremendous, tremendous. Thank you. Thank you for that. Well, I want to preach about Jesus this morning, and um, I want to tell you how the Lord seemed to lead me to get to this spot. I went to a preacher friend, Don Anderson, was preaching in a revival, and I went to hear him, and he, he got to, he didn't preach from this verse particularly, but in John chapter 12, verse 32, he read it or alluded to it, and I, the Bible says, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. And I'm not going to preach his message. He went on to preach about the Lord. But I thought about this very thing that I can preach great encouraging. I don't know if I'm great, but I can preach encouraging messages to you. And all I am is a cheerleader to get you through. I could preach uh, messages to strengthen your life. And maybe I'm just a motivator. I could preach uh, to improve your performance somewhere. And all I am is a coach or preach to say, I'm here for you. And I'm a friend. I could preach uh, some life lessons that will help you go further than you would have without me, and I'd be a mentor to you, and hopefully we can all be that to everyone. I understand the need is there, but my friend, I'm called to be a gospel preacher, and so sometimes you just need to clear off a spot and remind everybody 
that we will take Jesus every time. We didn't orchestrate that. I didn't know till last night they were going to sing that song, but I want to preach about the Lord and about Jesus Christ. I'll get you to the text in a little bit, but in John it says, Jesus said, it is I, when that storm was happening. And I want to preach about that for just a little while this morning. I trust it'll be a blessing to you. So as we get into this time of the service, we're excited about what the Lord is going to do. And I want you to look at John chapter 6, verse number 15, if you would. John chapter number 6, verse 15. As you find your place there in John 6, the gospel of John, I did hear this story about this lady that went to her counselor, and he was kind of a matchmaker of sorts. He'd kind of had that reputation. And she said to him, I need you to find me a husband. And she said, he said, well, define what you say. I want the perfect husband. Well, what do you mean by perfect husband? And uh, she, he said, because one lady's perfect husband is another person's terrorist. You never know what, what he, everybody's expecting. And she said, well, I'd like to have somebody who's regimented. I want him to wake up five o'clock every morning. I want him to be on a schedule. I want him to be industrious. I want him to do his own laundry. I don't want a lazy person. I want him to be fit. I want him to exercise for two hours a day and said, I want him not to be uh, on the internet all day long, maybe seven minutes and just that'd be enough online. I want him to be a thinker. So I want him to be spending time in the library, maybe a couple hours a day and uh, just be reading and thinking. I want him consistent. I want him reliable. I want to know where he's at all the time. I want him to be regiment. I want him to go to bed nine o'clock. I want all that. And she said, you think you can do that? He said, yeah, I think I can do it. She said, you think you really can? She said, yeah, I, you, where do you find a husband like that? She said, I'd like one. Where do you find one? He said, I think I can. You really do? She said, yes, I think I can. And she said, where would you find him? In prison. <laughs> so be careful what you ask for. About like this one fella, he, he was getting older and he, uh, he, he uh, was looking in the mirror and he walked back out there and he said, honey, to his wife said, I, I, same thing. I'm looking in the mirror. All I see is a fat, ugly, old, bald guy. And I got to go through work. I got to go through this day. I need you to pep me up. I need you to tell me something that would be encouragement. I need you to compliment me and boost my ego. And she thought for a while, she said, well, your eyesight's wonderful. <laughs> so you ladies are a real blessing to us this morning. I know so. In John chapter 6, the Bible says, verse 15, And when Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king, he departed again into a mountain himself alone. And when the even was now come, his disciples went down under the sea and entered into a ship and went over the sea toward Capernaum. And it was now dark and Jesus was not come to them. And the sea arose by reason of a great wind that blew. So when they had rowed out about five and 20 or 30 furlongs, that's about three, three and a half miles, they went out. They see Jesus walking on the sea. This is not a, not a new story to us. And drawing nigh unto the ship, and they were afraid. But he saith unto them, it is I, be not afraid. Then they willingly received him into the ship, and immediately the ship was at the land whither they went. I want to preach for a little while about having that faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said in that verse, it is I, be not afraid. Father, bless us now as our prayer. We'll look into you to do a great work in our hearts. Lord, our desire is that. Please, I pray for your glory. Make it so in Jesus' name. Amen. So as I dive into this passage, I want you to think about Jesus Christ, and I want you to think about the able Savior that we have. If you look in verse number one or verse number 19, you'll see the first point I'm going to draw out. In verse number 19, it says this, so when they had rowed about five and 20 furlongs, they see Jesus walking on the sea. He's that able Savior that's out there, and the things that are making them worried, and the things the sea that is boisterous, and they don't know what to do. So here's the Savior defying nature and putting all things at odd because there's nobody supposed to be walking on the water coming out there. It's only happened twice, and the other one is in this parallel passage in another gospel when Peter comes out, but the only way Peter gets to do it is because he asked the Lord to come. And I believe that he would have had the whole lot of them come out if only they'd have wanted to. They said, Lord, can the rest of us come? I think he would have said, come on, boys, you get out here and I'll take care of you. And I think he would have. But we see the able Savior 
And we see him defying nature, but it shouldn't be any surprise to us because he's the one that created nature. He's the one that spoke it into existence. He's the one that didn't have to work hard at it. He just spoke. And so I'm seeing that we have this able Savior that's able to overcome the difficulties that everybody would say are impossible to make it through. Today, I'm afraid people run from one fire or one difficulty to another difficulty. And without the hope and the help of Jesus Christ, they're not going to find any more satisfaction in that next problem than they got out of the last problem. I read a story about a fellow named Edward Sweeney. He lived in an apartment in New York City and his bed caught fire and it woke him up. And he jumped out of there half asleep, as you might imagine, and he went and opened the door to go outside, and he didn't go outside. He thought he did. He opened the door and shut it behind him, but he found out he was in his closet. And as he came in the closet, some things got shuffled around there. He couldn't get the door open. He's in the uh, excitement and the anxiety of all that's going on, and he couldn't get the door open had it not been for the neighbors calling the fire department, the fire department getting there in time to bust the door down and get him out of there, he would have died. And can you see how quite literally he was going from one problem to something worse? He was going from one fire to the next fire. And he wasn't going to get any more relief out of that spot than he was in the, in the space that he was already in. And I'm afraid that that's how our friends, that's how our coworkers, that's how this whole world is doing. They're in one problem and they think they try to get it put out somewhat and they go to the next one. And then they're going to find that when they get there, it's no better and maybe even worse than what they came out of. And I'm saying this morning that you, if you're a born-again believer, you know the Lord is your Savior. My friends, you don't have to go from fire to fire and hope that the next day is just a little bit better than the, than the last and hopefully somehow you can get by. Instead, you can rest assured in that able Savior that goes with you wherever you go. If you get a call or I get a call this week that cancer has shown up in our family, we won't be the first one in the recent days that have had that call. If we had get a call that there's divorce that has invaded your family or my family, you won't be the first one that's gone through these difficulties of tragedy. Or if there's a surgery needed, or if there's financial loss, or this election which you can't go on any kind of social media or television without seeing all kinds of ads about it. And all of these things that are happening. And if we're not careful, we'll live our lives like the world lives their lives. And we'll just go from problem to problem to problem, never having anything solved. But my friend, I'm here here to tell you that we have an able Savior. When the disciples were, all they could see was the, the boisterous wind of that water there. They had an able Savior that came walking on what they were afraid of. And my friend, he's going to do the same for you. That thing that scares you and gets you shaken in your boots, that's the thing that Jesus can come walking over, not phased, not bothered, not, not, be, not belittled, uh, belittled at all or not shrieking back, my friend. He is the able Savior. Amen. But not only that, look at verse number 20. It's not enough that he is able to defeat whatever's in front of us, but he's also the comforting Savior. Look in verse 20. But he saith unto them, it is I, be not afraid. Now, if you or I had been saying, I don't, God just preserved his word. And here it is. And we, I might've said, don't, don't be afraid. Oh, it's me. But as if God wants to put emphasis on there, and I don't know how it all works, but as if he wants to put emphasis on it, he's reminding them who it is first. Because when you get that settled, when you get it down that it's Jesus Christ that is assisting and helping and, and nurturing and leading you, then you can put on the end of that, don't be afraid either. So we see that not only is that able Savior, but he's that comforting Savior. We see that he's able to overcome the obstacle. This is the same obstacle that Peter's going to jump out and uh, he's going to get to walk. You'd see that over in Matthew. But he's going to do something that's also astounding. Not only is he going to calm the storm and calm the waves that are there on the outside. But can I just tell you this? If that Savior is able to calm the storms on the outside, he's also able to calm the storms on the inside. And I don't know which was worse that night. I don't know if it was the water than the waves that were so boisterous or whether it was the worry on the inside of those disciples' heart. You know, there's people that came in here today. You did everything you could to get your face 
straightened up. You tried to dry your tears. You tried to get dressed up so everybody would think there, nobody would think that anything was wrong. But on the inside, you're just as boisterous as the waves were that night for the disciples. My friend, you need to take heart because just as real as it was that Jesus calmed the storm on the outside of that boat, he also calmed the storm on the inside of their hearts because in another passage in, in Matthew, he says that when they got in there, the winds ceased. So if he can walk on the water, he can settle the water of your heart as well. And there's some of us Christians that we are living way below our raising because God has given us all the comfort and the assurance that he will go with us through whatever is facing us. But we're living like somebody who doesn't have that assurance. My friend, he's the comforting Savior. Years ago in the midst of a Latin American revolution, they had had a coup and they had overthrown the government such as it were, but there was an American citizen that I read about. And these people that seized power, they were going to execute this American. It was in a different era, but the, one of the U.S. soldiers, one of the U.S. officers rather that were there with that soldier, he took an American flag and put over him. And he said, if you shoot him in a firing squad... He said um, that you would be, if you shoot him, you're, you, you will fire through this American flag and incur the wrath of the whole nation. This was a little different era, back more in our days of America when we spoke softly and carried a big stick. And so that scared these folks that had taken power. And when those words came and they said, when you shoot him, you'll shoot through this American flag and incur the wrath of a nation that loves this soldier and their flag, then the people let him go. My friend, we've got more than something better rather than an American flag to drape us. And I love America. We've got something better than whatever country you were born in to drape in that flag. We've got better than a set of clothes that look impressive to other people and think, wow, they must be heading to church. We've got, the Bible says, we, we are dressed in the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. It tells us to put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. And so when we see somebody baptized, that's an outward symbol of what already happened to them on the inside. Because when they get under that water and they're baptized into Christ. That's just the picture. That's regular water. But what that pictures and what that symbolizes, what already happened, they were baptized into Christ when they got saved. And so as one old preacher put it, whatever comes your way, whatever difficulties come your direction, come down your street, have to be or are rather father filtered. Does that mean that everything that comes in my life, God is happy with? No. Does that mean that there's always going to be joy and rainbows and everything's going to be great? No. What it does mean is before it gets to you, it's got to pass through his allowance because he won't allow anything to happen to you but what he okays and he can veto anything he wants because he's God. And we take that from the, the great lesson in Job, everything that Satan did to that old saint of God, God had to okay before Satan was allowed to do it. And my friend, I'm trying to tell us this morning that we've got this comforting Savior, that we realize that God takes care of us. And there's some of us that we are living as jittery as somebody who doesn't know the Lord. And some of you, we need to take comfort in the Lord today. When you hear the things that you don't want to hear, when you're going through the problems that you don't want to face, You've got to remember that it's just as real as if the Lord stepped out on that water and walked across there that three and a half miles or so to get to them just to prove to them a point that he was going to take care of their needs. My friend, he's going to take care of your needs as well. Amen. And I see not only that, but I want to give you the last one in verse 21. That we also have this continuing Savior. Then they willingly received him into the ship. You better believe it. I, if I'd have been there, I said, we want you in here quick. If I'd have just watched Peter jump out and walk on the water, I'd like to think I'd have said, I'm coming too if you let me. But they certainly willingly received him into the ship. And immediately the ship was at land whither they went. This continuing Savior. Let's say you came in here today and you were encouraged by some fellowship of Christians you felt down and out, but now you feel a little better. You feel some help. You've been, had some camaraderie. Maybe you had some, uh, some strengthening some other people from other people around. But can I just tell you that there's no magic dust. There's no holy water. There's nothing in this atmosphere that's going to keep you okay. 
But my friend, there is a continuing Savior that as we walk out these doors, I can't be at church enough to always solve my problems. I can't count on Sunday morning and Sunday night and Wednesday night. I can't count on a revival once in a while. To, that's not enough time for me to always have my issues uh, solved by some fellowship and by some camaraderie and by some encouraging words from somebody. I can't always have that. But what I do always have is the promise in Hebrews chapter 13 where Jesus says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So when you walk out of these doors and when I walk out of these doors and you go get lunch and then you go do something else and then you, have, and you handle throughout your day and through your week, my friend, I'm saying that as Jesus continued in the ship, he, they willingly received him in the ship and immediately the ship was, the, was, the ship was at the land whither they went. They were already heading somewhere, but Jesus got them there in a hurry. And my friend, you and I are going somewhere as well. And I, for one, want to stake my claim that Jesus is with me wherever I go. And if you're born again in this room, you can make the same claim. That's not unique to me. But I want to challenge you to not only know that up here, but feel that down here and realize that whatever is happening in your life, he's the Savior that will never leave you nor forsake you. Perhaps a second miracle is done in verse number 21 where it says immediately the ship was at the land. Whether they went, it just says it was over there. Well, that was that, that he did it instantaneously. Regardless of that, we realize that they went with Jesus. And in Matthew chapter 14, the Bible says when they, were, when they were coming to the ship, him and Peter, the wind ceased. So I can't control, nor can you, what's happening on the outside. I can't keep you from getting a call from somebody to tell you the bad news that's happened in your life. I can't, get, I can't keep somebody from coming up to you in the hall and saying, hey, I want to tell you something and it turns out worse than you thought it was. I can't keep that from happening. You can't keep it from happening for me. But what we can do is see that continuing Savior. And my friend, I'm challenging every single one of us to do what the Scripture says in John chapter 12. I, Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. And I believe we've just got to lift up Jesus Christ in our own individual life and let him work his work in your life and in my life because, my friend, I need to be all wrapped up in him. A preacher went to see the beautiful redwoods in California and there's a lot of beauty in that area. And those redwoods, how they'll grow from the perimeter roots and just come up. And they say they'll just bind together where you can't hardly see where one begins and the other stops. But he was drawn to this one particularly that grew at an angle. And it was growing toward another one that was growing straight up. And he said, but about 100 feet up in the air, they met. They've been growing like that for years, of course. But he said from where they met on, there weren't two trees anymore. He said they just grew together and they had just one, one bush at the top, one bushy part of the tree at the top, and you couldn't tell it if you were looking from overhead. And I thought, and he, that preacher said, what an illustration of somebody when you're living your life, but you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, and he saves you, he takes you, he secures you, he puts you in there, he wraps you up. The Bible says, Jesus says that we're in his hand, and his hand in the Father's hand, and nobody can pry, pry you out of that. I'm just saying this morning that he is not only that comforting Savior, but he's that continuing Savior. And my friend, I'm telling by the promise of the Word of God that he will go with us. Even in the people who are facing great tragedy right now in our region. And Amy and I drove down through part of that going to Ambassador College the other day. And just seeing some of the things that people are still dealing with. And they're going to be dealing with that for a long time. But those that know the Lord. There's nothing that we go through that we don't, that we go through alone. And so as we have an invitation time here in just a moment. I'm going to challenge every, every Christian to make a decision. Every Christian to make a decision. The ensemble and Peyton sang about it. I'll take Jesus. You say, Pastor, Brother John, I'm already, I'd take Jesus. I, I do too, I know. But I want to stake the claim again today that whatever happens to me this week, I'm putting my faith in Jesus Christ. Not for salvation, I've already got that settled. I'm in. 
But I'm staking my claim. I'm putting my faith in him to handle whatever is coming my way. And I'm hoping every Christian in here makes the same decision that I did that do right now. And that is that they, like the disciples in that boat, they re realize who that is. Can you imagine when they finally figured out who it was out there? This is him. And it drove Peter to that action of jumping out. But they all got the benefit because he climbed up in that boat and the wind ceased. Some of us live our lives like this. We're just all fluttered. We're not sure that we're going to make it through. We're not sure that we can continue. And my friend, if you were counting on me or I were counting on you, then we would be right to doubt. But you're not counting on me and I'm not counting on you. Instead, we are counting on our continuing Savior. And whatever's happening in your life, I just felt led of God. As, as sure as I'm standing here, I felt led of the Lord just to lift him up today. I've not told you how to navigate your business decisions. I wouldn't know if, if I did want to tell you. I haven't told you a lot of things that you may have come in here wondering but my friend, I believe that we need to, as an individual person and then as a collective church, we need to spend our lives lifting him up. And I, if I be lifted up, will draw all men unto me, he said. So this morning, would you do some inventory on your life? If you're saved in this room today, have you been living like it? Have you been enjoying all the comfort and the continuance and the confidence that Jesus wants to give? Or have you been ignoring some of it and just trying to live as a the lone ranger and forgetting what you have at your disposal? My friend, if that's you and all of us get there, don't think so holier than thou, all of us get there. You think we don't take inventory some morning how many thoughts come through your mind before you realize, wait a minute, I need to give this day to God. If we kept him in mind all day long, our lives would be all totally different. But every Christian, I'm challenging you to take his presence with you. Yes, he goes with you. We, we're thankful for that. But take that realization with you and live in that comfort and that continuance and that confidence and then secondly, if you're here and you're not saved, you're not sure that Jesus is your Savior. He's the Savior, I know that, but He's not your personal Savior. You've never received Him. If somebody's adopting a family, or adopting a child rather, that has to be done legally and then that family accepts them, yes. There's a lot of times an adopted child will come into the family, but they don't really let that family become their family sometimes for a long time. So Jesus is the Savior, but is He your Savior? Have you received Him as your Savior? And if you haven't, it's no wonder that your life seems like this most of the time. And then sometimes us Christians, we get our life back in that way because we're not resting in Christ. So one of two things should get you. If you need to be saved, I ask you to put your faith in Jesus Christ. You will never find peace. You'll never find contentment. You'll never find that ease through any other avenue you try to go down. Not until you receive Christ as your Savior. And then, as a Christian, rest in Him. He's the Savior. He said, it is I. Be not afraid. And He tells that to us today as well. I'm going to ask our instrumentalists to come and as they come and you just do a little soul searching, I would like for everybody to make a decision this morning. If you're here and you need to be saved, please, my friend, don't leave without getting that settled. Don't leave without receiving Christ as your Savior. And then to you that are saved, Please don't leave this room just confident in your ability to make it through. 
I'm a fighter, Brother John. I'm a scrapper. I can do it. No, you can't. Oh, I'm resourceful. I'll find a way. No, we won't. Oh, I'm good at when the chips are down. I'm good. No, no, we're not that good. We need to rely on him. And as the ladies play and God speaks to your heart, I invite you to come. In just a moment, we'll stand, but you've got the time right there as you're sitting. God leads you to come. Come on, but wouldn't you make that decision for Christ today? I'm going to trust you. I've been acting like an unsaved person. I've been worried and fretting, fearful, like I don't know the Savior. Let's confess it. Let's get it right, my friend. Only trust Him. Only trust Him. It's not them out there or it's not those other ones. It's us. If you're able to, would you stand together with us? If God's speaking to your heart, I invite you to come. Christians, would you lead the way? Come and do business with the Lord. As these pray, would you join them if the Lord's leading you? As on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. I give one last plea. If you're here and you're not sure that you're saved, Brother Daniel's right here in front of the pulpit I preach from. Would love to take a Bible and show you how you can be saved. Know for sure. If you're a lady, he would have a lady deal with you and just take their time and give you all of the input from the scriptures. Maybe you already know enough. You know what you need to do. Maybe right there in your seat, you just need to receive Christ as your Savior. You already know your condition. We're all sinners. Need to look to Jesus Christ. My friend, today's the day. As they play one more verse through, if God speak your heart, I invite you to come. Amen and amen. Thank you. you. May look this way. It's a joy to be in church, and um, I, I know that the Lord led me in this, and I'm thankful for you being here together with me. I do want to uh, announce to you that uh, Brother Joe and Tracy Kirk, Brother Joe, would you raise your hand back there, right behind Jess Phipps, and uh, Joe and Tracy saved and baptized and love the Lord, and they'd like to join Buffalo Ridge Baptist Church, and uh, so we, I told them they'd just stay back there and to make it a little bit easier on them, but we would need a motion to accept them, receive them into membership. Brother Matthew Hensley makes that motion. Brother Shannon Barker seconds that motion. All in favor, say aye. aye. Opposed, same sign. Praise the Lord. I hope you'll get by and meet Joe and Tracy uh, as, as they're our new members, and we're thankful for that. But a joy to be here this morning, and I, I, I probably said at the beginning, but just in case I didn't, I want to thank everybody who had a part in the harvest party. Uh, all kinds of you brought candy. We probably uh, helped the dentists in the area greatly, but uh, we, we told them to brush after they ate it. But uh, you brought candy, and then many of you worked, and you got it ready, and you worked during it, and then you cleaned up afterwards. It was a great way to get people on the property, and then for us just to fellowship with them. Of course, they all got the gospel in written form as well, and it was just a wonderful time. Thank you so much. And then God gave us a tremendous weather. I just can't believe how beautiful it was. It's wonderful. And uh, so thank you for that, the Lord, but of course for what he gives us such opportunity to do. But thank you for being a part of that. And uh, what a joy. Thank the Lord for what he's done in our lives. And thank the Lord for Summer Scroggs getting a good report. After that surgery, you keep her lifted up in prayer.
And uh, then uh, we'll certainly look forward to you. If you're able to be back tonight, we invite you back at 630, and we'll have a great time together. So I'm going to ask uh, Brother Marty, if you don't mind, to slip to the pulpit. I'm going to get back to the lobby, and Amy and I will be back there. If we can do anything for you, we'll meet you in the lobby. Oh, and then the last thing, if, if you order T-shirts, Except for one size or two, uh, those are all back in the back. If you ordered those, then you can stop by Maddie, and Maddie will be back there to dish them out to you. And then we've got some extra, but we're, we didn't want to confuse the issue. We've got some extra. After these ones get handed out, we may sell them in a week or so. So if you're interested in that, just stay tuned. Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for the message and reminding us of what a wonderful Savior we have and that we can trust in you and that you're there for us, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your goodness. Thank you for this day. Pray that you bring us back tonight. It's an appointed time. Pray that you watch over us in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm.